Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome to the art studio. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Lumix 20 millimeter 1.7 micro four thirds pancake lens, this tiny little lens and showcase some photographs that I've taken with it. What do I see through the viewfinder when I put this lens on my camera? How do I think? We'll get into all that as well as should this be one of your purchases for prime lenses for your own gear bag? So stay tuned. <laughs> So it's the age old question, what is your favorite lens? I get that all the time as a professional photographer. You know, every lens has its purpose, its, its sweet spot, and this lens is no different than that. So pretty much I love all the different lenses for different reasons. A lot of times I'll turn to a utility lens, like a 2.8 zoom if there's plenty of light. But let's face it, as professionals, we also need prime lenses when we're working in extreme low light because we have a standard of excellence we want to live up to. We know what we expect from our cameras and lenses. And so this tiny little lens is one of my go-to lenses uh, that I think is a great entry-level prime. I say entry-level because of the price point, but truth be told, this is a prime you'll turn to often in your work. So let's take a closer look at it. At about an inch thick, it is tiny, very small, very lightweight, it allows you to be very unobtrusive about how you work. Uh, I love that about the lens, but what I really love about it is the perspective that it provides me uh, as a photographer. Let's dive over to the B&H site first, look at the price point, talk about it a little bit more, get a few more details. Uh, so yeah, over on B&H, it's $297. Um, so at $300, it's a very reasonably priced prime lens. I think it's the perfect go-to for those of you who are thinking of stepping into getting some primes and already have your utility lenses, uh, your 2.8 zooms, because of the, not only the price point, but what it's going to provide you in terms of perspective. Uh, it has a 1.7 at its widest aperture, f16 at its smallest. Uh, it is uh, a 40 millimeter equivalent for full frame uh, and there are lots of five star reviews here on it, rightfully so on the B&H site because it is quite a remarkable uh, small lens to work with. Uh, how do I see this lens? Uh, let's dive into some photographs. If you don't already know, uh, I am beyond the camera and a fine art expressionist painter. You can see the big piece behind me here. Uh, and this is my art studio, I do a lot of work here. Um, I also use my cameras creatively. So I, not only do I do professional work, but I photograph my paintings with my Lumix cameras, have them printed on fabrics, sewn into dresses, skirts, and scarves, and creative things like that. It's just a fun little side project because the paintings are very expensive. This allows me to create things that I can send out into the world, kind of make uh, the world my gallery and bring the paintings to life in creative ways. With that said, I spend a lot of time in art galleries uh, and when I'm showcasing my own work, sometimes uh, I'll photograph uh, my wife in the space uh, and, and we'll kind of showcase the fashions that way. With that said, uh, you can see here uh, a perspective of her standing in an art gallery with the paintings there. Here's the sweet spot of this lens. I'm going to say this over and over. <laughs> the relationship of the subject to the space is very much like I see with my eyes uh, as a human being. I love that about this lens. It creates remarkable full length and three quarter length shots. Uh, and even some close ups can be really remarkable on it. But this is the sweet spot of this lens and what I love about it. It's wide enough to capture a space, but also wide enough to capture a subject in the space remarkably well also. So my wife models for me as we travel the world uh, showcasing some of these fashions and the creative ideas we have. And a lot of times we'll be in hotel lobbies which are very small uh, but very creative in terms of the space. And as you can see, same thing with these shots, uh, just Lumix 1.7 using the natural light that's there. Uh, but you can see it puts the perspective on the subject but you can still feel the space in the shot and I really, really love that. Here we're in our hotel room uh, in New York City. Of course, it's New York. The hotel rooms are tiny. Uh, and the door is literally to her left there, right past the umbrella. But again, you can see in, in a tiny hotel room, it opens it up to doing some beautiful full-length shots. 
uh, and using the space in a creative way. And having that prime fast aperture is incredibly important a lot of times as well because a lot of times we're just utilizing whatever light source we can find. Sometimes it's a lamp next to the bed as you see here and it just allows us to uh, utilize those fast apertures and at 1.7 there's a lot that we can do. When I'm showing my work I love that I can be in the space and just kind of quietly capture a shot, you know, walk by, click, see uh, the perspective of people seeing the work. Uh, so I love that I can be unobtrusive. And I also photograph a lot of very high-end weddings every year, uh, a lot, about 20 weddings a year all over the world. Uh, for clients who are seeking an, a, a photojournalist that's incredibly unobtrusive, uh, and we capture things in a very natural way. And so I love this lens when I am at weddings because of the unobtrusive nature, but also, again, the relationship of the subject to the room and space. Here at 1.7, you can see this beautiful fall off of um, focal point where we get a little glow coming through the window as she's putting on makeup in her bedroom in New York City. I turn to this quite often as we have processionals or recessionals in a big cathedral uh, at 1.7, plenty fast, not really having to worry about it. Here I'm at ISO 800 uh, F 1.7 uh, at what, an 80th of a second, I do believe. Uh, so as you can see, plenty fast to be able to capture moments like that. Here during their first dance, a great go-to for first dances. Again, because you can see the relationship of the subject to the space, capture other people in the distance, uh, and it feels very natural, just a very much like the human eye is seeing it when we're standing there in person. And that is really the sweet spot of what this lens is all about. So hotel room, again, when I'm working in small spaces, bedrooms, hotel rooms, uh, gallery space is incredible for those purposes. But at 20 millimeters, it's a great landscape lens as well. Uh, here I have an infrared converted Lumix G7. And as you can see, great landscape. Looking out the window uh, of this particular same wedding here, look at the fall off here as well, focusing up on the top of her dress, just this gentle fall off of focus with these cameras. Uh, another perspective in a small room, this is our studio in our Connecticut space. Uh, I lit this from outside and put a little smoke in the distance with a little smoke machine, but I just love how it showcases size-wise, uh, again, the subject and the space so well. Infrared converted camera, again, we're down low. She's looking down, about to put on her shoes. We're aiming up. Yes, you can do some really beautiful close-ups with this lens as well. Works fantastic when you do an infrared converted lens. Great for portraits, great for photojournalism. And here's another great example. Uh, as she walks out of her hotel room at the Pierre Hotel in New York, uh, I'm just photographing in the hallway. And even in a hallway, you get that perspective, that relationship of the subject size-wise, and it really works well uh, in those small spaces like a hotel hallway. Uh, on our channel, we vlog, uh, try to do it every week. We, did, we missed this week because of the holiday, but you can go behind the scenes of this shoot and see more of this. We, we visited Glen Allen Castle uh, recently. And it's a beautiful space that's a literal castle in Morristown, New Jersey that they just now are opening up for weddings and events. The owners of the space had us do a portrait shoot there. And then we also captured some details here, as you can see, uh, of an event that they were having. But in a large room, it also not only gives that relationship perfectly from the subject to the size of the room, but look at the gentle fall off of the details at 1.7. So you really get a feel for the size of the space, but it also hones in the eye of the viewer to where we want them to look. Here's another shot taken, kind of looking through the doorway of, to the billiard room. And I have a couple examples of this. It's really great for capturing the details of food, uh, plenty sharp to capture the close-up of the food, but also if people are serving food, it also really showcases the service and the performers in their space remarkably well. You get the feeling of service in it. And one last shot, uh, the owners had asked us to do just a quick shot of them together before we left. And again, look at how it showcases the size of the space, hones the eye towards where we want the viewer to look. So 
That is the Lumix 20 millimeter 1.7. Again, I think it's an incredible lens for its price, a great entry level prime, but at the same token, this is gonna be a prime that you're gonna to turn to your entire career. Uh, so a very solid purchase. Um, I'm gonna be reviewing a lot of different lenses here on our channel, especially when it, in regards to Micro Four Thirds over the next month or so. Uh, and just showcasing exactly what we did here. Where does each lens fit into our bag? What is the sweet spot of the lens? Uh, what types of photographs do I take or see when I'm on assignment with that particular lens? I think that's a great way to share just kind of some ideas of what you may see as you go out into the world with that particular lens on your camera body. So stay tuned for more here on our channel at Together in Style. We appreciate you everybody. Have a great one.